evening. Welcome once again to Dispatch, the weekly show designed to keep you on track as you build and operate your layout. I'm Roy Smith, your dispatcher. Thank you for joining me tonight. Coming up tonight, uh, we have uh, two big shout outs, your layout photos, the question of the week, and your comments. Now let's get started with the first of the two big shout outs that we have tonight. The first shout out goes to your friend and mine in the hobby, Redbird Tony. Redbird Tony is one of the hosts of On Track Tuesdays. In addition, he shares the work he is doing on his layout with you. Here he is during a recent episode of On Track Tuesday. Say this. Um, for live stream shows, guys, remember, we have On Track Tuesday every Tuesday, uh, the roving on stream show. Tonight's my turn. Next week will be uh, Creative Rails, uh, a.k.a. Box Car Benny. Of course, after uh, Benny, uh, Tom's uh, pilling people in here. So tonight I want to talk about a couple things. Now let's take a look at his layout. His layout is based on the Gulf, Mobile, and Ohio, or GMO, railroad between 1966 and 1972. The GMO was a Class I railroad with routes extending from Alabama and Louisiana in the south to Illinois in the north. I'd like you to go on over to Redbird Tony's channel and take a look around. I'll put a link to his channel down below in the description to this video. And while you're over there at his channel, be sure to subscribe and tell him that Roy Smith sent you. Now, stay tuned because I will be doing a second shout out a little later on in the show. Coming up next, your layout photos. Many of you have posted photos of your layouts on the N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision Facebook group this week. Let me share those photos with you now. When this episode of Dispatch ends, I want you to go on over to the Facebook group and post a photo of your layout there. And then I will be able to share your photo here on next week's edition of Dispatch. When you see this photo on Facebook, you will know you're at the right place. This photo was taken at Echo Canyon on my layout. And while you're over there at Facebook, why don't you go ahead and join the group? Again, be sure to post a photo of your layout there because we model railroaders love to look at layouts and photos of layouts. I will put a link to the Facebook group down below. Now the question of the week. In last week's episode of Dispatch, I asked, what era do you model and why did you choose to model that era? For simplicity's sake, I identified three major eras, including the steam era, the transition era, and the modern era. 
Well, the results are in and I find them to be quite surprising. Here they are. As you can see in this graph, the number of you who model modern era layouts vastly outnumbers either of the other two eras. Before tabulating these results, I thought it would be the other way around. Of course, many of you who model the modern era say you also like the steam and transition eras. And many of you run steam locomotives on your modern era layouts just for fun. My layout is modern era. In the past, I was dead set against running any steam locomotives on my layout. However, at some point I discovered that the Union Pacific does run 844 at the head of excursion trains in the area that I model. That's all the justification I needed to start running 844 on my layout. And now our question for the coming week is, what scale do you model? HO? N? Some other scale? And why did you choose to model in that particular scale? Let us know in the comments down below and I will share your answers in next week's dispatch. Again, the question for the coming week is, what scale do you model? And now your comments. As you probably know, I post a layout update to my channel every Saturday morning. I am currently producing a series of videos about the big track plan changes I am making on my layout. This past Saturday's video was called Progress at the Bridge. In it, I showed you how I am building a lift-up section that will take three tracks across the entrance to my train room. I received more comments than I can count in response to that video. I want you to know how much I appreciate your comments because they have helped me to build a better layout. I also want you to know that I read each and every one of your comments and I respond to as many of them as I can. Here's what some of you had to say about Saturday's video. Papa Dan wrote, Great episode, Roy. Boy, you are full of surprises. Dexter Dog wrote, I can well understand your apprehension about making a major change to an existing layout. Who of us hasn't been there thinking, this might be a big mistake. Gary Leach wrote, Roy, great job. I think that I would use a lift out bridge by using Cato expansion tracks. Mark Rose wrote, Hi Roy, I would avoid a swing down bridge since it would be too easy to bump into with knees and legs. And Kettenhund wrote, Nice one, Roy. I hadn't even thought about hinging the bridge at the back. It's the best idea, though. A number of you have asked me about that crossover near Pocatello staging. I apologize for not explaining it in the video, and I promise to explain it in this coming Saturday's layout update. For now, let me just say that it's there for three reasons. First, to take the tracks on the lift-out section to the correct tracks at Pocatello. Second, to avoid using a series of space-consuming turnouts. And third, to avoid problems with reversed polarity in the tracks. But let me also say that I might change my mind about putting the crossover there. Again, I will explain all of this in greater detail on Saturday. Stay with me in the meantime. All right, it's time for our second shout out. And this shout out goes to Hastings BNSF N Scale Modeler. Anthony, the creator of this channel, is a rail enthusiast who shares the hobby of building an N Scale layout with us. He also shares his diorama and scenery techniques with us. Let's take a look at a clip from one of his recent videos. One challenge when building a layout using foam and modules is connecting the track between the two modules. I found a solution, I believe, while watching Roy Smith on his N-Scale Union Pacific Evanston Subdivision channel. On one of his recent videos, he showed how he was using a Kado expansion track uh, to help him build a liftout section. So I decided to experiment and see if I can make this work uh, 
by embedding it in the foam and connecting it to the flex track that I was already using. Um, so here I am uh, carving out uh, the foam initially with a razor blade uh, and then a utility knife to, uh, to embed the, uh, the pieces down in the foam so the tracks would align up. Took a little time to get this uh, project done, uh, the carving it out the, the little notch so the tracks line up. See me here experimenting. Uh, I also made sure that I made the, the notches uh, wide enough so the expansion joint had to be open a little bit. To uh, finish it off, I added a few uh, pine trees that I bought a couple weeks ago at uh, the store and took a, uh, a shot with uh, my trains. I urge you to go over to Hastings BNSF N-Scale Modeler and check it out. Be sure to subscribe when you're over there. You'll be glad you did. I'll put a link to Anthony's channel down below. Be sure to tell him that Roy Smith sent you. Well, that just about concludes tonight's show. If you enjoyed it, I invite you to give it a thumbs up. As always, remember, I upload two videos each week. Dispatch on Tuesday nights and the layout update on Saturday mornings. I hope to see you at both of these each week. Now, of course, if you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon so that you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. Thanks again for joining me tonight on Dispatch. Until next time, happy railroading. I'm Roy Smith, and I will see you again very soon.